Hi, it's Zen the Crypto Queen, and I finally cleared my computer, emptied my email, and here I am. I thought I was going to talk about the topic of uh, geopolitics today. I think I mentioned I was going to do that um, every other video or every second video, but you know what? I, I've been reading this book for a while. I got about four chapters in, realized I was on my way to doing all the right things anyway, and I just started reading a few more chapters today, sorry, chapters today, and um, this is the name of the book, so I wanted to show you this because, um, yeah. Uh, listen, it's not financial advice. I'm simply sharing what I do, read, research, etc. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one session with me, please comment below and I will get in touch with you. Or you can always email me at zendevon at gmail.com and we'll set something up, okay? Please put crypto in the subject line, only that one word. Thanks. Um, and make sure you hit the subscribe bell and thumbs up if you find this content valuable to yourself. And hit that like button, thumbs up, you know, for my algorithms. It really helps grow the channel. And all my links are down below in the description box. And now that housekeeping is out of the way, I wanted to talk about ISO 2002 coins. Um, nope, that's not the right one. Uh, nope. Let's see. I'm getting there. Okay, this one. All right, I'm going to leave this paused on the screen so you can really read it. Um, now, I read this book or started reading this book when it came out, and that was uh, late 2022. Yeah. So some of this uh, you may already know, um, and this is interesting. Nostro, Vostro accounts, Latin words, hours and years. Okay. Um, hmm. I wonder if they're talking about Nassara, Jasara there in code. Um, I don't know. However, um, I'm going to stay on this page for a minute because some of you are new to crypto period. Um, and I want you to take this all in. Okay. Because maybe you'll buy the book. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll rent it on a on an app or something to read on Kindle, whatever the case may be. I just think it's important for you to read this information. So I'm um, leaving it there for a second. You could always put it on pause, read this. I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, this was about Ripple and, and what's going on with Ripple. And, you know, it is the opinion of most people that, are in the crypto industry, and I will talk about Bitcoin in a minute. Um, but as you know, ISO 20022 coins, and those are specifically XRP, XLM, XDC, I call them my X's, <laughs> Algo, IOTA, Doge, and Litecoin, okay? So I'm going to give you a few bullet points about all of this as soon as you take in some of this information. Now, some of it you may know, but if you're new to my channel, welcome. And um, yeah, do the reading, okay? And this one is interesting because it, it, you know, it goes right to the SEC case and uh, something special is gonna happen with that in April. You know, I follow a few people around on the interwebs, you know, YouTube and all that. And there are people who are guessing that things go from zero to 10,000 uh, overnight. People that think it'll be $5 and holding for the next five years. You know what? I don't have a crystal ball. However, I do think that in April when the SEC wraps this, there's going to be some very nice movement. And I think it'll probably be in the two digit range. I don't think it's going to shoot straight to five digits. Um, do I think it's going to hit there eventually? Yeah. Well, look at what happened with uh, Bitcoin. Listen, if I started buying Bitcoin and I've been in crypto since 2011, when, when Bitcoin was $320, I mean, if I had the foresight to just hold it until, you know, for, for 10 years, <laughs> you know, it's at 42 or somewhere in there today. We'll take a look in a minute. Um, so you get what I'm saying. I'm going to move this one and let's go to the next one. 
Now, some of this has, has changed and it, all these numbers have gone up, but I'm going to leave it here for a second while I'm talking. But, um, and I've had Cuban coffee about an hour ago, which always sends me into the future. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking faster than I can even speak. So let's just read this and you got to understand that the SEC case, see it's, a, it's all down here, but you know, this is 2022, we're in 2024 now. So um, this is her suggestion. If I were to believe and buy one cryptocurrency, this is the one uh, I happen to agree. Um, I'm gonna move that. And what are the dangers of crypto? I'll let you read this too, but getting scammed is part of it. So now I'm gonna read you some of my bullet points while we're on this page, okay? Because I wrote these down because I want you to take these things into consideration when you're considering investing, okay? Some of these f might feel obvious, but listen, I've had people get in contact with me and some of these things are just, they seem obvious to me, but it happens to people, especially newbies in crypto. So I want to run through them, okay? Don't invest more than you can be okay with missing. Okay, and that's not to say that you shouldn't, but if you're gonna do it, move it off exchanges and onto your ledger. Now, if you don't own a ledger, my links are down below in the description box. If you don't own XRP yet, up my link to Uphold is down in the uh, description box. If you need help with either one of those, you can hit me up in the comments. I always answer my comments. They show up on my phone right away and I do my best to help people get out of sticky situations or just easy ones. And if that can't be helped online, you can always book that one-on-one -on -one session with me, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Never ever share your seed phrase or your passwords with anyone and only keep them in written form, not in a spreadsheet. I don't care if you have encryption on your spreadsheets. Keep two or three different notebooks. Always update your passwords if you change them and keep them in different places around your house in case you spill coffee on one of your books. Please don't drink coffee next, next to your computer. I mean, you could blow up your computer and you can ruin your notebook all in one go. So try and avoid that. But you know what I'm saying. If you ruin one notebook, at least you have a backup, okay? And again, keep crypto off exchanges and on a ledger. Okay, there's a link down in the description box, but let me tell you why. Anything online is not yours. Anything on a ledger, which looks a lot like a flash drive, is protected, okay? Now, some people have asked questions about ledger before. I'm gonna move this so you can um, see the name of the book again. Um, they've asked questions about this before. Um, ledger works on Ledger Live software. You can store things on your ledger and not touch your ledger for years. And when you fire it up, it opens up Ledger Live software and everything update, updates to current pricing. Okay, so that's how that works. If you have any other questions about a ledger, please put them in the comments below. Okay, here's one that is just key. Okay, and I thought everyone knew this, but not everyone does. Um, it seemed obvious to me because a friend turned me on to Dogecoin, which was, I looked at it and I went, what the heck is this? But it was, I'm going to say three years plus maybe now. Um, but don't sell or withdraw your original investment. Okay. So my experience with Doge, I, I, he said, if you have 250 or 500 laying around, buy up some Doge. I took a look at it. I was like, what? But this guy is very reliable to me. He's a great source of information. I've known him for I think 10 years now. And um, so I bought $1,000 worth of Doge, okay? And then one day I opened up my exchange to check on it as I usually do and it went, it just went nuts overnight. So I took out a lump sum for myself and I bought some Bitcoin and I bought some Ethereum with the rest of it, okay? That was at the time. Now would I choose those coins? Mm, probably not. I'd probably do my X's or uh, Algo, Iota, Doge or... Um, well, it, it was out of Doge, but Litecoin, okay? 
All right, now, if a broker or you find somebody on Facebook or anywhere else, okay, especially Telegram, Discord, um, any social media, if a broker contacts you or there's a front person that contacts you, they strike you as being a great businessman or woman. Um, this recently happened with a client of mine. I won't mention who. Um, you wouldn't know them anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if they... If you cannot do your due diligence or the brokerage itself looks legit, but this person has a front page on Facebook, like I said, if they're hitting you up, mm, be, be leery, okay? I am just very skeptical of people hitting me up to begin with, and I'll tell you what happened to me recently, and it's kind of funny, but I did it on purpose knowing what I know, all right? So if they're offering crazy returns like, you know, invest $1,000 and make 10 k back in 10 to 30, 45 days, I don't care how short that period of time is, that is a ridiculous amount to expect in return and there will always be an issue with withdrawing it, okay? Um, so that happened with um, a client and I just want to offer that information to you so that you don't succumb to scammers. Okay, so here's what happened to me, and I thought this was interesting because I know better, and I knew that something would be up, okay? There are key phrases, words that scammers always use, okay? But this um, person hit me up in WhatsApp, okay? And I'm always on WhatsApp because I know people around the world, and I talk to them, you know, when I have Wi-Fi on WhatsApp, okay? So this woman hits me up, and... Uh, and said, would I like to make some money using crypto? I said, yeah, sure. And I've been in programs before where I've, I've made some money, you know. So I, I went, okay. And I know how they work. They're good until they're not good, okay. So um, she was offering a $100 bonus for signing up. And I said, is this a pay to play? Because I don't do pay to play. So she said, no. Okay. All right. So I opened this account. There's a hundred dollars in there. Here's what you need to do. You need to do this app promotion thing. It takes about an hour. Okay, cool. In the meantime, I'm withdrawing that hundred into my uh, Coinbase account as Ethereum because I was being paid in Ethereum. Okay. And then putting it back into their account and then it would earn money. Okay. So at the end of the first day, I made $215. Great. So I got paid $115 extra for doing this work that first day. All well and good, right? Next day, you got to sign up, use $100. So now it's $115 in my account in Ethereum. I'll keep this brief. But um, yeah, I did that and I did the task for the day and ended up with $415, okay? The third day, when I was clicking on some promotional ads for them, it went into double jeopardy, meaning two were submitted at the same time. It means your commissions are times 15. But it was 90, minus $98 in my account. So I said, well, how do I straighten this out? Because I can't click on more ads until I straighten this out. And she said, oh, you have to send $98 more of Ethereum, you know, into the account. And I went, all right, well, I'm already playing with their money. I'll send $98. That's cool. So I sent it. So at the end of the day, I downloaded, I forget what it was now. I, I think I made, I don't know, 200 or something that day. Okay, so I download all of it. So far, I'm up. I'm playing with the house money, right? And the third day, and I knew it would happen. I couldn't wait. They, they asked me, did I want to level up? And level, leveling up means putting 500 in there. Now, I already said, I don't pay to play. So I put in 100, and I was willing to keep the commissions lower. Okay, well... Halfway through clicking through their promotions, I hit a double jeopardy again. Only this time it was minus $926, okay? So I hit up the lady and I said, hey, I'm at, not, I played Stu, but I said, I'm at minus 926. How do I clear the account so I can click ads? She goes, oh, you have to send $926 uh, to, uh, to your account in Ethereum. And I just started laughing and I said, no, thank you. I'll take a hard pass. And she said, what do you mean? And I, and I just blanked. I didn't respond. Okay, well, the money was already in my account from the prior day. So I did earn some, some money. But this is how they get you. Because if I sent the 926, 
highly likely they would have paid me for that day and I could have walked away with a few thousand, okay? But the next day, what would they do the next day? And then you're playing with your own money. Don't do pay to play is the bottom line. I told you I had Cuban coffee, so listen, I'm sorry I'm rambling, but this is important for you to know that these things can happen. Now, what is that weird wording that they might use with you? Um, it isn't how a native uh, American speaker would speak. And I don't mean that to knock any other culture or the way that they speak, but if they start calling you um, either dear or they start calling you a term of endearment, no, mm -mm, no. Also, if they say, hey, you're doing great, listen, I don't need reassurance like that, so you can stop, okay? Those are tip-offs. They, they also will word sentences in a way that a non-native speaker, possibly um, from, I'm not going to say it, but maybe like um, there's a few African countries that are no, known for scamming. There are also scammers from every other culture, so don't let that. I'm just giving you your forewarning, okay? There it is. So let me move on. Um, make sure you take profits along the way, you know, don't get greedy just because I think XRP is going to make it all the way into five figures. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to cash out five to 10% here and there when it hits, you know, my goal number. So I already have them written down in a book where I'm going to cash out five to 10% along the way. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, and let's see. Oh, okay, so this happened to someone who commented on um, one of my other videos earlier this week, and um, and it made me kind of sad because I think he may be out of luck. Um, I did tell him to send in a support ticket to the wallet that he referred to. I don't want to mention his name. But always, always, when you are moving crypto, always make sure you're clicking send and that specific crypto on an exchange and receive in your wallet or ledger. Also make sure you are looking at the same cryptocurrency. For instance, Bitcoin, send it, make sure it's Bitcoin and receive it, okay? Because you're copying and pasting your unique address, you must be careful. Move slowly. Don't be in such a hurry until you get to the point where I can move things very quickly because <clears throat> I've done it many, 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 many times. But if you have not, move slowly, okay, and with caution because once your crypto is sent, kind of hard to retrieve it because it is decentralized and it's just out there somewhere, okay? Um, I told this person to send in a support ticket to that particular wallet. They may be able to find it because he wanted to receive it and he hit send, uh, but the send address, I'm assuming, was his own address. So it may take a little time for them to straighten that out, but I'm hoping that he gets it straightened out and he's going to let me know. So I will report back on another video, okay? So a few other things that I wanted to touch on because uh, uh, she touches on it in this book and uh, I just wanted to say it because... Well, we all, I think we all know it, but sometimes I think we all know things and we don't, okay? Remember, Wall Street is often wrong, okay? Just keep that in mind. So when you're watching the news and you see uh, anything going on with Wall Street, uh, take it with a grain of salt, okay? Now I wanted to give you my two cents on um, Bitcoin, and I'm also going to give you um, her overview of a basic model for growth allocation of your assets, okay? And I thought this was interesting, um, but here we go. Right at the moment, I'm tempted to buy Bitcoin because I have it on good word. But again, this is not financial advice. I simply share with you what I research, um, the, my little small network of sources, and uh, right now it's at 42,000. And there's word out there on the street that it could go to 125, 150 within a year or two. However, there are also opposite views that 90% of all crypto will go away other than the IS20022 coins. 
I don't know the time frame on that. So I'm kind of willing to roll with buying maybe a half a Bitcoin I might go with and see where that rolls me. But, you know, that's me. Don't make any of your decisions based on me. Do your own research, please. Now, I just have to say this. If you don't believe in or you're not clear on crypto at all, and, um, well, all I can say is quit watching uh, mainstream media, okay, and do your own research. Um, it is not near the end, hardly. But haters are going to hate, and I just also believe that crypto is right in its infancy, and it's global, it's decentralized, and even though there's a lot of people that think that there's, you know, a lot of market manipulation or this is a setup by the feds and the CIA to get your money via, um, you know, grabbing at your account money somehow, well, people believe that about banks also. And I'm more likely to believe it about banks than I am about crypto at this point in time. All right, now I want to share with you the basic model for growth allocation, okay? Um, I think this is interesting because I kind of have the first three set up this way, just accidentally, but large cap funds, 21%, mid cap, 11%, small cap, 9%. I think I have a mashup somewhere in there. Real estate investment trusts, REITs, 3%. And I, I'm going to say that you could probably go three to five to six percent on that one. International funds. Here's where I I take a departure with our international funds: six percent, emerging markets two percent. I go a little higher in those. Specialties EFTs three to five percent. At the moment, I don't have any EFTs. I may jump in on a Bitcoin EFT. We'll see how this works out. I'm not quite sure yet. And it also says allocate three to five percent for all crypto. Okay. Now that that's you know I I always recommend five percent of your net worth in in crypto. You know that's as high as you should go unless you feel particularly risky. I'm a particularly risky kind of woman, so I go a little higher than that. Okay. And just remember to keep your mindset visualizing good things are coming my way because they are, I guarantee you. And let's see, I just wanted to pop up uh, this. I wanted to play you this. Okay, so this is about um, XRP and I just happened to, I typed in ISO 20022 on X, formerly known as Twitter. And I got this twit on Mr. Intuitive Interesting. Larry Fink on Fox Business. Gasparino asked, how about a XRP, EFT, ETF, sorry. Uh, Fink, you know I can't answer that. Okay, I'm going to play it for you. It's very quick. Bitcoin ETFs is an example that we're legitimizing it. We're creating more safety. Well, let me ask you this. Will you do another ETF? How about an XRP ETF? I know you got e Ether out there. Yeah, I, we, how about XRP? Can we, you answer that? I can't. <laughs> And you know what we do? I do. Well, I can't. <laughs> All right. They're giving me the wrap. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at crypto prices today just for the heck of it. Um, where am I here? Oops. Went too far. Bitcoin is at 42 and dropping. Ethereum 2508. Okay. And uh, let's see where XRP is today. And XRP is at 57 cents. So good day to buy. Um, and I'm going to wrap it right there. Thanks for sticking with me this long. I know this was a longer than usual video. I love you all. And I'll catch you on the next video. That will probably be geopolitical. At least I'm gathering notes for that one. And thank you so much for being here. Ciao for now.